Eisenhower was uh, a very good Cold War president, I have to say. And I didn't, didn't really think of him this way before I, before I wrote this book. But I mean, the, the image of Eisenhower is he, he was, you know, had one hand on the tiller estate and another hand on a nine iron. And, you know, he basically <laughs> was off and wasn't involved in anything. Yeah. But really what he, was, what he did is he downplayed things. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is so different than what Kennedy did when he came in, and everything became very heightened. The yeah. rhetoric became yeah. very heightened yeah. from the day of his inauguration. President Kennedy's speech is brief and stirring. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the small undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. A significant portion is addressed to Latin America. To our sister republic, south of our border, we offer a special pledge to convert our good words into good deeds. In a new alliance for progress to assist free men and free government in casting off the chains of poverty. But this peaceful revolution of hope cannot become the prey of hostile powers. Let all our neighbors know that we shall join with them to oppose aggression or subversion anywhere in the Americas. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. Eisenhower th tried not to raise the stakes. Yeah. He didn't constantly, he let other people talk about the commun, I mean, Richard Nixon was good at talking about, uh, you know, the, the communist invasion. Eisenhower didn't get involved in that. He did have a kind of quiet dignity about him that some people mistook for not being very involved. Well, you know, in recent years, there have been a number of histories, uh, biographies of Eisenhower that have come out and shown very clearly how involved he was. Yeah. Uh, and he certainly was involved in covert activity. I learned that. I mean, he, he had a very hands-on approach yeah. uh, to yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, as you said, he, he was responsible for Guatemala. He was responsible for what happened in Iran which the Iranians have not forgotten about to this day. Yeah. It's one of the problems between the two countries to right. this day. Right. Uh, and uh, and uh, a few other things, uh, whereas, uh, you know, and it was all behind the scenes, whereas Kennedy makes a, an inaugural speech which says, let the word go forth to friend and foe alike that we will spare no anything to yeah. make sure that, whoa, <laughs> you know, this was a little nuts. He it, gives a lot of speeches like that. Yeah, this, w this, this was, this came over ex extraordinarily well at the time. Yeah. But in the light of history, you say, oh my God, the guy was almost inviting this answer. Well, it was. I mean, you know, particularly when you, I mean, Kennedy ran on the so-called missile gap, this, this, this idea that the United States had fewer nuclear weapons than the Soviet Union, which was hogwash. Yeah. Uh, we knew very well from our U-2s that we had many more nuclear warheads and weapons and missiles than the Soviets. Now, Eisenhower couldn't advertise that fact because he'd be giving away um, spy technology yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. You know, intelligence. Yeah, yeah. But the truth of the matter is, as Kennedy knew, um, we had four times as many missiles as the Soviet Union, and we had a 17 to 1 advantage in nuclear warheads. So Kennedy we were. Knew this? Kennedy knew this, yeah. We were way ahead of the Soviet Union. I mean, Kennedy may not have known this when he was running for president. He oh, knew, yeah, he yeah. certainly knew there was no, no uh, missile gap. That was, yeah. that was bogus. But it was g good politics. But once he became president, he of course knew yeah. that we were far superior. And so these, these statements that he would make, provocative statements, they scared Khrushchev. Uh, he gave, you know, for example, this is after the Bay of Pigs, he gave an interview to uh, Stuart Alsop. 
um, and in which he hinted at the possibility of a nuclear first strike. Now, I, Kennedy would never have done that, and it was really a, a tough statement for, you know, to placate his um, people on the right, his hawks in the United States, but a very dangerous thing to say because Khrushchev did read that, and he thought, my God, the, the Kennedy's actually thinking of a nuclear first strike. Uh, sometimes Kennedy was so rhetorically gifted, but he would sometimes let the rhetoric um, get so heated that, that it caused things to happen uh, that shouldn't have happened. You know, he this is a very that. common human phenomenon. It is. Sure. I'm not justifying it. I'm simply yeah. saying that you know, uh, people overspeak themselves. And the problem is the opponent, well, we, we are told all the time now, all the time for the last three years, don't listen to what the guy says, watch what he, watch what he does. Right. Baloney. Baloney, yeah. Absolute baloney, because you never know whether he might end up doing what he says. Yes. You know? and, and of course, during the Cold War, it was all words. I mean, yeah. or, or putting in missiles and stuff. But I mean, it wasn't actually going to come to blows. It couldn't come to blows or the world would end. Yeah. So rhetoric mattered tremendously. Yes, yes. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.